Hello everyone, welcome back to Math with Allison. Today we're working in our sequences and series series, so we're going to be talking about the integral test. Let's go ahead and dive into it. Here we have the definition of what the integral test is. Suppose f is a continuous positive decreasing function for x is greater than or equal to 1. You do need to have all three of those requirements. And then we have a sub k is equal to f sub k, right? a sub k is like the little formula inside the summation. What we do is we write it as a function, and we're going to integrate it between the bounds. So k starts at 1, so our lower bound is 1, and it goes up to infinity, so our upper bound is infinity. So both of these converge or diverge. In the case of convergence, the value of the integral is not equal to the value of the series. So just because the integral converges to some value doesn't mean that the series is equal to that value. It just means that they're both going to converge. If the integral diverges, like equals infinity or something, that means the summation is going to diverge. To understand what this really looks like here, we have the summation using the right Riemann sums. The right Riemann sum is where we're taking the right endpoint of each interval and we're using a rectangle to estimate the area under the curve. So first we have the right Riemann sum, right, that summation. It's going to be less than the actual area under the curve, which we use using a function, right? So what we do is we take our h sub k. So let's go ahead and pretend like our a sub k is equal to 1 over k squared. Then our function in this case would be 1 over x squared, right? And we're integrating the area between the bounds. We also have that this is going to be bounded between the left Riemann sum. And so this is going to be where we're overestimating the area between the curve and the x-axis, right? So let's say that our integral is equal to at infinity, right? Let's go ahead and say diverges. Since this is less than our summation, that tells us that our summation is greater than infinity. So this is also going to have to diverge. So if the integral diverges, our summation diverges. Now, what about convergence? Let's go and say this converges to some number b, right? Well, this is also greater than the right Riemann sum, that summation, right? And that tells us that this is also going to have to converge. Now, this is not an equal sign, so that doesn't mean it equals b, but it equals some number a that's going to be a little less than b. So if our integral converges, so does our summation. So that's kind of how it works hand in hand. Let's go ahead and try some examples here. Well, here we have the summation k equals 1 to infinity of k over k squared plus 1. The first thing we need is for this to be continuous on the domain. So this would be 1 to infinity. So our function f of x would be x over x squared plus 1, which is continuous, right? There's no illegal values that we have to worry about. So yes, we have it's continuous. We also need to have that it's positive on the domain. We have that our function x over x squared plus 1, when you plug in positive numbers, it's going to be positive, right? So we have that condition satisfied. And the last one is that it's always going to be decreasing. Notice here that the denominator has that x squared plus 1. That is going to be growing much more quickly than the numerator, right? And so we have that it's going to be decreasing on that interval, right? Now that we have all three of these are satisfied, now we can apply the integral test. So here we're going to take the limit as b approaches infinity in order to make this a proper integral. We're going to start with our lower bound of 1, and we're going to go up to b, and we have x over x squared plus 1 dx. We're going to go ahead and use u substitution, so I'm going to say u equal to the denominator x squared plus 1. du is going to be 2x dx, which means we need a 2 here and a 1 half on the outside in order to get that 2. Do not forget, we also have to change our bounds. So our x, our lower bound, is equal to 1. Our u is going to be 1 squared plus 1, which is equal to 2. And now our upper bound is just equal to that b. So u is going to be b squared plus 1. Now we can go ahead and replace this in our actual integral. The limit as b approaches infinity. We have that 1 half. That's going to be 2 to b squared plus 1. 1 over u du. Let's go ahead and evaluate this integral. Limit as b approaches infinity of 1 half. That's going to be the natural log of u evaluated between 2 and b squared plus 1. But let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So now think about our limit. When b approaches infinity, this is going to be the natural log of infinity, which just goes to infinity. So this is going to diverge to infinity. Since our integral diverges, our summation or the series is also going to diverge. And you could say by the integral test, blah, 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 if you want to be more specific, whatever you want to write. But that's our solution. Let's go ahead and try another one. So here we need to have that it's continuous on the interval. So this interval is not going to be from 1 to infinity. It's actually going to be from 3 to infinity because notice that k is starting at 3. We have that our function for us that we'll be working with is 1 
over the square root of 2x plus 5. And that is a continuous function, right? There's no illegal values inside the domain, so we don't have to worry about it. We also need that it's going to be positive on that domain. Well, we're taking the square root of positive numbers. 1 divided by a positive is a positive, so we're good to go on that. And finally, we need to have that as decreasing. So as our, the values that we plug in, as they're getting bigger and bigger, this is going to be a decreasing function. 1 over the square root of larger and larger numbers gets smaller and smaller, right? So we have that it's going to be decreasing. So we have all three criteria on our MET, and here we can apply the integral test. So the limit as b approaches infinity, notice that we're going to start at 3 because k starts at 3, go up to b, and we have 1 over, and actually I'm going to go and rewrite it so we can see power rule. I'm going to write it as 2x plus 5 to the negative 1 half dx. If you want to use u substitution here, you totally can. We'll go ahead and write it out. u is going to be 2x plus 5, du is going to be 2dx. So we need to have a 2 here, which means we need to multiply by 1 half. We also have to change our bounds. So the lower bound is 3. u is going to be 2 times 3 plus 5, which is equal to 6 plus 5, which is 11. Our upper bound is b. u will just be 2b plus 5, right? So let's go ahead and rewrite this limit as b approaches infinity. Now we have that 1 half. We have a new lower bound of 11, a new um, upper bound 2b plus 5. And here we have u to the negative 1 half du. Now we can go ahead and evaluate the actual integral, right? We get that 1 half. This is going to be u to the positive 1 half divided by 1 half is the same as multiplying by 2. So I'll just go ahead and multiply by 2. Evaluated between 11 and 2b plus 5. If you wanted to multiply that 2 and 1 half, you totally could. They're just going to um, divide each other out, right? So this is actually what we're working with. Now let's go ahead and do upper minus lower. So notice here when we're plugging in infinity, we're taking the square root of infinity, basically. The square root of infinity is infinity. So this is going to diverge to infinity. So here, by the integral test, since our integral diverges, our series will also diverge. Already, we have one more. So k starting at 0 going to infinity of 1 over k squared plus 4. Let's go ahead and make sure it satisfies the requirement. First, we have it's continuous on the domain, right? This domain is going to be from 0 to infinity. So our function that we'll be working with is going to be 1 over x squared plus 4. Now, the domain doesn't contain any of the illegal values, so we know it's continuous, right? We also want it to be positive. Since we're squaring each of our x values and we're plugging in positive x values, this is always going to be positive, right? And then our final condition is that it's going to be decreasing, which again, we're doing 1 over x squared plus 4. So as we plug in larger and larger x values, the denominator gets bigger and bigger, which means 1 over the denominator gets smaller and smaller. So here we also have that it's decreasing. Since all three of those are satisfied, let's go ahead and use the test. So limit as b approaches infinity, we're starting at 0 going up to b of 1 over, that's going to be x squared plus 4 dx. Notice here we're going to have to use a trig substitution. So we're going to go ahead and set x equal to 2 tangent theta. So we're using trig substitution when we have x squared plus a squared. What we use is x is equal to a tangent of theta. So let's go ahead and set all of that up. Here's my beautiful triangle. Let's pretend that's a 90 degree angle. So we have that x divided by 2 is equal to tangent of theta, which tells us that is going to be opposite over adjacent, and our hypotenuse is going to be x squared plus 4. So let's go ahead and find everything that we need. So we have our x, that's great. We need our dx, so let's go ahead and differentiate this. dx is equal to 2 secant squared theta d theta. So we have our dx, we have our x, we also need to change our bounds, right? We have our x bounds, but we want to find those in terms of theta. Our lower bound is 0, our upper bound is b, right? And we also need theta, which I'm going to go ahead and use this little equation. By taking inverse tangent of both sides, I get theta all by itself. So here we can plug that in to find what theta is equal to. So here we get inverse tangent of 0 divided by 2 is just 0. That's the angle where sine is equal to 0, which occurs at the angle of 0. Our other one is going to be inverse tangent of b over 2. That's going to be a bit arbitrary. We'll just leave it as is. So now we have everything we need. We have our x, we have our dx, and we have our new bounds. So let's go ahead and replace everything in our integral. We have the limit. As b approaches infinity, that's going to be 0 to inverse tangent of b divided by 2. Now we get 1 over x squared, so I'm just going to square that real quick. We get 4 tangent squared theta plus 4. 
multiplied by dx. That's going to be 2 secant squared theta d theta. Okay, so first what I'm going to do in the denominator is I'm going to factor out a 4. So we get 4 tangent squared theta plus 1. But that's an um, identity, right? We have a tangent squared theta plus 1 is just equal to secant squared theta. So let's go ahead and cancel some things out. The secant squared theta cancels out, which is super nice. And one of these twos cancel out, right? So here we have the limit as b approaches infinity. If you want, you could bring out that 1 half to the outside. 0 to inverse tangent of b divided by 2. And all that we have left is 1 d theta. That we can integrate, right? Limit as b approaches infinity. We end up with theta divided by 2, or 1 half times theta, evaluated between 0 and inverse tangent of b over 2. So let's go ahead and plug in upper minus lower, which are, works out very nicely because our lower is 0. We just end up with 1 half inverse tangent of b divided by 2 minus 0, which I'm not going to write out, right? And now this is where it's good to know what inverse tangent does. So I'll draw a little picture. Inverse tangent as a function, it does something like this. Woo! where it approaches a horizontal asymptote of pi divided by 2. So as x approaches infinity, or in this case b approaches infinity, our function is approaching pi over 2. So this is equal to 1 half times pi over 2, which is equal to pi over 4. Here we have an example of convergence. Since our integral converges, the series also converges. It does not mean the series converges to pi over 4. It just means that both of them will converge. So be very careful about that. But that's all I have for us in this video today. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it. So make sure to check out my playlist. They're linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see then. Thanks for watching.